The Williamson ether synthesis is reacting an alkoxide with a primary halo alkane. What I mean is this is an alcohol that has been deprotonated. Perhaps you had the pure alcohol and you mixed some sodium metal into it so that the sodium reacted with it, gave you some hydrogen gas, the sodium might displace that H and leave you with this ion. A primary halo alkane has a halogen, bromine is a good leaving group, connected to a carbon, and that carbon can have at max one other carbon connected to it. I'm actually showing you methyl bromide here, or a bromomethane if you prefer. The reason it needs to be primary, as in only one carbon-carbon bond here, or none, is because this reaction happens via SN2, which is called the backside attack. The negative charge on this alkoxide is what attacks that carbon and forces the bromine to come off of it. This is a concerted mechanism where this is attacking at the same time as the bromine is leaving. There's an intermediate where both of these are half connected, or I guess it's a transition state, where both of these are half connected and these hydrogens are all in the same plane as each other. What ends up happening is that that bromine's gone. You have your R and O attached to the other side of the carbon compared to where the bromine was. And these three hydrogens have kind of been pushed from left to right. So this hydrogen, which was in front, is still in front, but now it's pointed to the other side. This hydrogen, which was in the back, is still there, but it's a little further to the right. And this hydrogen has been pushed this way you're left with bromide as a byproduct. So all of a sudden, you now have an ether molecule. This is a single bonded oxygen with one carbon or alkyl group here and another carbon or alkyl group here. That's the definition of an ether. And we also want to point out that the stereochemistry, if there is any, around this carbon has switched, as it always does for an SN2 reaction. Perhaps this if I had have made these different things, this could have been like R. And then after the reaction, perhaps it becomes S, depending on what else is connected to it. The point is that the stereochemistry has inverted. Now, again, I want to emphasize the Williamson ether synthesis is only for primary haloalkanes, where the carbon that has the bromine on it has at most one other carbon connected to it. As soon as you have a secondary haloalkane, you're going to get a mix of both SN2 reaction, which, sure, will give you this ether, but you'll also get some E2 or elimination reaction happening as well. So one, yes, this can attack that carbon, and some, the bromide will fall off and you'll still end up with an ether, but also you have a side reaction that competes with it. This alkoxide can take away this H, the electrons in that bond end up flowing here into a pi bond between these two carbons. And the bromide then falls off, which you can kind of see is uh, like it's kind of similar. There's still an attack by the alkoxide. The bromide's still falling off, but you're forming an alkene here. You end up with ROH, which actually is probably how you created that in the first place. So why would you want to recreate it? That carbon is still connected to two hydrogens. It's now double bonded to this carbon. And that carbon is connected to both a methyl group and a hydrogen. Well, that's not an ether at all. That's just a byproduct that you were never asking for. I mean, unless you were asking for it, I guess. You're, you also get your Br minus as a byproduct there as well. The point there is if it's a secondary haloalkane, and secondary means that the carbon with the bromine on it is connected to two other carbon atoms. E2 will compete against your SN2 and you won't get as much of a yield of ether as you thought. And in fact, if that bromide was tertiary, as in the carbon with the bromine is connected to three other carbons, see, one, two, three, you're only gonna get the E2 reaction. That's because the SN2, which is a backside attack, it has to 
come in and hit this molecule on the opposite side of that carbon as the bromine is on is kind of blocked by the bulkiness of these substituents. It's not going to be able to attack and just press that bromine out the same way it did when it was open to attack, like when these hydrogens, which are small, weren't blocking it. Anyways, for a tertiary haloalkane, it ends up only being the E2 reaction. It can't attack from the backside here, so all it can do is take that H away, blah, 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 same as we did on the other page. You end up with the ROH, you end up with an alkene, because you've now formed a double bond there, and that carbon will, had two methyl groups on it as well, along with the bromide that's formed. That was all just like extra detail here. The Williamson ether synthesis to actually form an ether is best to use primary haloalkanes. You can create the ether from a secondary alkane, but you're going to get other byproducts. And by the time you get to a tertiary haloalkane, you're not going to get any ether. You're, so why call it an ether synthesis at that point? Hey, I hope that made sense to you, explaining why it works for some and why it doesn't work for others. And uh, best of luck.